Okay. Okay. All right. Welcome to our third business to business forum. We appreciate you guys coming and um, I'm going to go through the housekeeping and then I'm going to turn the time over to Anne Miranda and she's going to actually facilitate the rest of the evening. So our housekeeping is, is that um, all cell phones put to the quiet side meeting terminal and then um, the meeting, these meetings are, are really pretty much set up to help individuals and collaborate and so we'd like to keep the the uh, we like the fact that you guys mingle and interact on your way in but we want to hold a lot of that until the end so that we can actually get some of the the information that from our guests um, out there so hold questions until for them and then um, <coughs> that's it we have two guests tonight and then and um, Anne is going to introduce them. So, here you go. <laughs> thank you. See, I was right on you did track. good. Yeah, yes. thank you. Uh, well, welcome, everyone. Well, um, um, like Blake like said, we've got some speakers here today that are going to tell you about the events that are coming to town in the next two to three months. And they're going to give you some ideas of how you can participate with those events to help promote your business. So, with uh, the first speaker, I'd like to introduce Christian Anderson. He's from Mesquite Gaming. Thanks, Anne. Um, just wanted to stop by and tell you guys about some upcoming events that uh, we're participating with. Uh, the first one, um, that, we, that we're really trying to activate a lot more uh, local businesses to help out with is the Mesquite Tri-State Marathon, which is November 17th. Um, I do have some flyers here that I'm going to put in the back. Um, you can get a little bit of information about uh, volunteering, uh, helping out with the event. The, really the, the main uh, side of it that we're looking to do is include local businesses with like the eight stations throughout the, throughout the course. Uh, we're going to talk about doing a you know, best, um, best decorated eight station so you can brand your business as the runners go by, help them out, and then come you know, reconvene at the uh, finish line, which they finish in the Casablanca Event Center, uh, to where you can come in, we'll be giving away uh, the prizes to the runners, but we will also announce the which aid station was the best out there and give recognition to the local business that's uh, helping us out. To give you a little background on the Mesquite Marathon, uh, it's a, called the Mesquite Tri-State Marathon. Uh, it is the only marathon in the United States that you can run through three states. Uh, we start, the, we bust them out uh, outside of Beaver Dam and start them in Utah. Uh, they cross right over in Arizona and then they run into Mesquite, uh, of course, finishing in Nevada. So uh, the race is very dynamic um, in that sense. We usually attract between 400 and 600 runners. Um, the goal for us is within uh, probably three to four years to be around 2,000 runners with the event. Um, the course is of the size to handle about that much. If we went any bigger, um, we'd run into some issues with um, old, uh, old Highway 91 and Mojave County might not be too happy about that. So. 2000 is a fantastic number for our community. Uh, it brings in people from outside of uh, Nevada. In fact, I have two runners already from Sweden that are signed up, so we do have international people that come uh, because of the dynamic um, course. We also, last year we had 38 states represented in the, in the race. Uh, the winner of the male portion was from uh, Ohio, to give you an idea of kind of the cross section. Uh, the state most represented is Utah. Uh, Utah is a great running state, a uh, very physically fit state, and a lot of those people do come down and uh, join us for this event. Uh, so like I said, I will include these in the back. It does have my phone number on there, an email address that if your business or organization is interested in helping out with the event, uh, we'll be able to give you some more information. And we'd love, love to have local participation out there to help um, support because these uh, marathons and other communities, it's very much a community event. And as those people are running through, it gives uh, businesses a great opportunity to get in front of them, show support that the runners are there. And when they leave, they, they can see that you know, Mesquite's a very supportive town of runners. And as they're driving through town and coming through, uh, you know, hopefully the goal is to stop and frequent local businesses and take advantage of our community and, and, and uh, bring business to us. Uh, so I will include that information uh, in the back. Um, some other events that are upcoming, um, and I don't know if Brian was going to touch on this, but the Huntsman World Senior Games is coming to town um, in St. George. Uh, Mesquite Gaming uh, is a sponsor of that event. 
that attracts 10,000 athletes to St. George. Um, a lot of those athletes do stay down here um, at, at Mesquite Gaming Properties. It's part of the reason why we sponsor, um, is to get, get in front of those people. Uh, with our sponsorship, we'll have a booth up at the uh, Dixie Center where registration is. Um, so we'll get to see a lot of people and pass out information about um, you know, Mesquite Gaming Properties. But it's a fantastic event. We do have a lot of people that come stay in Mesquite uh, for the community, um, the entertainment in the evening, and uh, just more activities to do. Um, the hotel rates seem to be a little more affordable down in Mesquite compared to what they are in St. George for that event. Uh, so you have a lot of people that even though they have to drive every day up there, they will still stay um, down here in Mesquite and, and at our properties because they can enjoy uh, you know, great dining prices here in town and also great accommodations uh, for the price for coming down in October. Um, so it's another thing to think about. Uh, like I said, there's 10,000 athletes that come down for that event, spread over two weeks. Um, so it's a, another great event that's coming in town here very soon, or close by, I should say. Um, another, a couple so local softball, baseball tournaments, uh, Gift for Kids is in the middle of October, uh, the 19th and 21st. Um, that's a USA softball event. Um, that event, the, the promoters actually ask the teams that come to town to donate presents uh, that are left here in the community for uh, kids during the holidays. So it's got a, you have some promoters that are trying to give back to the community that they're bringing into as well. Um, and that's usually around 60 teams that come in for that event. Um, so there'll be a lot of youth uh, coming through that weekend and, and uh, spending time with ski. The next weekend, uh, the 26th through the 28th of October, uh, Rocky Mountain School Baseball um, will be in town. Um, they run six events throughout the year, Brian. Um, and, uh, and they've been coming into our community for a long time. Uh, the UDs, uh, Dennis and Rhett, uh, are the promoters there. And uh, they're, they play at our fields here in Mesquite, St. George, and some of their bigger events. They even spill down to Moab, or Moab, I should say, sorry. Um, so that's uh, another quality event in October. Um, and then as far as another event that we you know, look for local support, we have the Nevada Open, which is in December. It's the 11th to the 13th. Um, it's, that's a professional golf tournament. Uh, we attract anywhere from uh, usually around 200 to 280 golfers. Um, they play at the Casablanca and Palms Golf Course three days. Um, it's a $92,000 purse based on um, you know how many players we get with that. Last year, I think we had 230, and the purse was $70,000. But if we max it out, it'll be a $92,000 purse. Um, it's a great time to get a lot of local pros from different communities to travel to that. It's kind of one of the last tournaments of the year that they can pick up a nice paycheck before the holidays. And also, the weather in Mesquite's really nice in December, uh, so they can still come down and play golf and enjoy the community. So. Um, you'll have a lot of you know golfers coming down, playing golf during the day, obviously. Um, but they'll it's be. In November. Uh, it's in December, eleventh through thirteenth. And uh, you know, local community, we, we are offering some whole sponsors for that event. Um, as I said, we will be utilizing the Casablanca and Palms. Um, you can uh, sponsor a whole for a hundred dollars, and we'll put up uh, signage for your uh, organization or business on the whole. And it'll be there for throughout the tournament, and uh, it's a good opportunity to get yourself out there as the golfers are going through. Um, it'll be a good exposure for them to uh, take advantage of while they're here in town. Um, leading into the early next year, I'll just kind of tease these events, but um, I would definitely want to hit on them because they've been a good staple for a lot of years now. The car show over uh, Martin Luther King weekend. Um, we've been attracting between six and seven hundred cars the last couple of years. Um, and have had just a great turnout from local community and also people from you know up north and Las Vegas to come out and see some great classic cars and enjoy just a great weekend in Mesquite. Um, you know we uh, typically have uh, the promoters usually have a vendor area uh, for car people to go through and others to go through so there's some opportunities there. Um, we also at the end of the month we'll have the uh, second annual Mesquite Bloom Festival um, we're very excited about this event. The first year was, was a great success. Uh, we definitely learned a lot from that event <laughs> and uh, are going to be doing some different things this year to uh, you know, support and, uh, and um, 
uh, progress it to what it can what it can be. We had 25 balloons last year. Um, our goal this year is to shoot between 35 and 50 balloons. And uh, with our the promoter that we're working with, who also does the Elko uh, Balloon Festival, um, he's a great resource to utilize, and he does a great job um, with it. But with that being said, we've already met with the Mesquite Arts Council and um, thinking about some ideas of what we can do during the day after the balloons launch in the morning uh, to give people an incentive to uh, stay in town uh, for the night glow, which was another popular event on Saturday night. So when the balloons lift off in the morning, which is usually around 7 a.m., uh, we'll have more uh, vendor areas down actually where the balloon sites are. So when people are down and looking at the balloons, you know, they can you know get some food, they can do some stuff so they can hang around that area. And you know, people aren't just kind of huddled in their cars waiting to see what's gonna happen. Um, and then you also have, we'll also be doing stuff that, um, like I said, we've spoken to the Arts Council that we're trying to work out some ideas of, you know, possibly a, an art walk um, at the Casa Blanca, uh, set up a stage area where we can have local um, arts people, uh, whether it be a choir, a band, um, a local dance group, uh, perform throughout the day. So when people are there, you know, they, they can have a schedule event so they can move around and see things. And also there'll be some opportunities for some vendor areas. So we want to definitely get some local businesses um, out so they can be there to, you know, see the crowd and help the crowd. Give them something that they know they have a vendor they can go to, walk through, spend some money locally here in Mesquite, but also incentivize them to stay throughout the day and enjoy the whole weekend down in Mesquite for a great festival. Um, so those are just really planning ideas that I definitely want to get you guys informed on. Um, and uh, you know, we, we're working on committees right now to, to work on those areas and get those ready to go. Um, so there will be more information that we will have on those events because we're a little farther out from them, but the plans are in the works. So I did want to you know, let you guys know and, and let you know what we're kind of thinking with those events. Um, I will leave uh, these uh, marathon flyers in the back. Uh, yeah. There you go, thank you. Um, and uh, the phone number on there um, will we'll get you directly to, to me, um, my office. Also, the email there um, goes right to our sales department. And uh, you know, any questions on the events that we have uh, through Mesquite Gaming, they will go towards me. So you will um, definitely be able to get a hold of me. If you have any questions, ideas for any of these events, uh, we're definitely open to listen to those and uh, you know, love the support of the community on all these. Um, I think there's anything else. Oh, another thing to think about too, uh, we are gonna be doing the Holiday Bazaar uh, in the event center again. Um, I know that we're working on uh, collateral and getting that stuff out for that event. Um, so keep your eyes out for that. And uh, it should be going up on our website here pretty soon to announce that. So um, another great resource, um, great segue. Another great resource is to check out our website. So our, our special events page um, on the website. Um, we are, is really up to date and a really good information piece to see what's going on uh, with people coming to stay at our properties and uh, kind of give an idea of what's happening um, you know inside the community with us and uh, you know it's a, it's a good resource to look at and uh, it's a good call to action if you have any questions or you want a little more information about it there's usually contact information on each one of the events that you guys can get a little more info from us um, if you do have any questions from on any of the upcoming events and then I know Brian does a great job with the, the uh, city website and the tournaments that are with the city. Most of it's with the baseball and softball that's on our special events is, is uh, on their events calendar as well. Um, so it's a good cross, cross way to get there. So I appreciate your time. Festival, and festival of Books and Festival of Trees are both going to be in the event center, right? Uh, festival of Trees, yes. Uh, festival of Books. Um, that's that's kind of a new one to me. Festival of Trees, yes, will be in the event center. Anyway, the, uh, the mixed martial arts did uh, very well, and uh, we are going to be looking to do more of those type of events in the event center. Um, the uh, the uh, Tough Enough promoter, which is out of Las Vegas, they do a great job. They put on a great show. And uh, yes, there'll be definitely uh, some ideas for more of those to come into town. Do you want to give me your website address? Maybe they don't know. Sure. Um, the 
The best website to go to that can get you to both Casablanca and Converge River is uh, mesquitegaming.com. Um, or you can just go to CasablancaResort.com or VirginRiver.com. Um, and even if you go to the Casablanca, always look at the bottom of the webpage. You can go jump right over to the Virgin River site as well. Um, so if uh, any more questions. Has anybody ever uh, uh, gone to Albuquerque to see what they do during the ballooning events there? We did send a representative to Albuquerque, um, gosh, two years ago. And uh, she did fly up uh, on one of the balloons. It wasn't during the actual balloon festival, but met with some people down there, and we actually had one of the balloon pilots come up when we were researching doing a balloon event and talk to them about Albuquerque and, and all that they do. Um, you know, the neat thing about those balloon events is um, the the community really um, takes over the takes over the event and really becomes part of it. The balloon people, they you know, they they're very passionate about flying. And uh, Mesquite's a, a dynamic place for them to come to, to fly. And I don't double in our numbers on balloon pilots. Um, I truly don't think it's going to be a problem because the 25 that came here were treated so well um, that I know they're talking to their buddies and say, come on down, let's go fly together. And uh, you know, watching them get ready, it's like kids at Christmas getting ready to <laughs> open up presents. They just want to get up in the air. And you've pre-ordered ordered the win, right? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the, the no, idea, same, same one with go for your day. The, the, the idea is no wind, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we put a kibosh on no wind, so uh, no, no way that's going to happen. Um, but the nice thing is that you know, the, the balloon pilots are, are very um, you know, used to all that, and they're very safety-oriented. Um, and we support every decision that, that they do. You know, the kind of interesting thing is, um, you know, watching them in the morning, the Saturday morning, for you, user, uh, user, you people over there, it was a beautiful morning. Couldn't feel a breath of wind on the, on the ground, but when they put up a balloon about 75 feet up, that thing shot towards Vegas, and you couldn't see the balloon anymore. And, uh, but the nice thing is that the, the pilots understand uh, community and, uh, you know, what the, what the people are out there to see. And so they still, you know, fire them up on the ground so people can at least see the balloons go up. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention, uh, this last year, they went to the local schools and did programs on the hot air balloons for the kids. We'll be doing that again this year. Um, you know, it's important to get the kids involved with it. Um, you know, the kids come home, they tell their parents that, man, we got to learn about hot air ballooning. I got to hop in the basket. And that drives people as well. And, uh, you know, we did uh, Mesquite. We did uh, Beaver Dam. And uh, we did Bunkerville as well. So we try to reach out to those outlying communities. And then, um, you know, of course, we get the, the local schools to tell St. George about the great program they have. So they get a little jealous about what we're doing. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, the, the, the uh, local activities and events that we do, um, you know, is we, we definitely are, are very, you know, driven to bring people to our community. Um, and uh, we want to do the best we can to you know, give everyone information and, and involve people as much as possible with the events that we can. So, we appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And that marathon is the pre-qualifier qualifier for the Boston Marathon, correct? Yes, it's a, it's a, um, that's what we're looking for. Uh, qualifier, uh, if you hit a certain time with it, then you can apply for the Boston Marathon. Uh, the Boston Marathon is so big that uh, you, they look at different uh, races, and if you hit a certain time, then they allow you to run in it. Um, it's a great problem to have. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. So, wow. And uh, you know, and also, you know, St. George. There's the St. George Marathon is a very prolific marathon. Uh, runners from around the world try to get in that. That's pretty much an invitation only uh, race at this point. And uh, they've been very good to us about helping promote and uh, get information yeah. out too. We so. should have such problems. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we're trying to make those problems a reality. So, you know, like I said, we're, yeah. within four years, we're, we're trying to get that race to 2,000 people. And and uh, you look at an impact of 2,000 people on the weekend before Thanksgiving, um, I think all of us would agree that so, you know, that would be a great yeah. thing to have. And, and uh, you know, just get people run around this town and, and having a good time. And, that's, that's the goal. So that's great. Thank you, Christian. Thanks, Okay, so there sounds like there's some opportunity for the events that um, Christian and Casa Blanca are bringing to this town. So um, some really good, good information. Um, so when our next speaker. I'll leave some cards on the back too, if anyone's picking up. Excellent. Thank you. Our next speaker is Brian Dangerfield, representing the city.
before Christian goes, I want to thank him. He's, he's kind of the unsung hero to bring a lot of these events to town, him and Mesquite Gaming. I went back to uh, Connecticut to the National Association of Sports Commissions with him last May and to see the relationship he already has with some of these groups. And uh, if we just had more hotel rooms, we could bring even more events here. But um, that, that was getting our room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 just get it open. Seems like there's a big empty with the stars in there. So anyway, thanks, thanks to Christian, and, and I appreciate the the uh, Mesquite Economic Development Commission, all the the work that they've done, and and we're gonna miss having you be a part of that, and uh, and, and working with you at the chamber has been it's been phenomenal, and uh, you know Christian brings up events like the Hot Air and Balloon Festival and the Car Show. And the marathon; those are signature events that that cities can put their names on. And one event that uh, I think you might have skipped over just by accident is the the Remax World Long Drive yeah, Championship. Will be uh, it'll be a week earlier this year. The last couple of years we've had bad luck in November. The the weather just turned really cold and windy. And last year we almost had people hitting it out of the grid. I mean there was a 457 yard hit last year. We only had about 10 more yards before they hit the fence. So, uh, But um, I thought it, it might be uh, good to just talk for a second about the value of each one of these visitors that come to town. The Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority does intercept studies. And they, they figure that each visitor that comes to town is worth anywhere from $105 to $113 per visit. That's the hotel room and the other expenses that they have. And uh, what, what, we, what we know from their data is that each visitor brings uh, two and a half other visitors with them. And these are mostly sports visitors that we're talking about here. So when you're looking at, at one visitor, uh, the value with them and their guests coming to town is about $397 every time they come. This isn't per day, this is per visit, just to keep it in perspective. Right. So That's non-gaming dollars. That's non-gaming. Yeah, that, that's hotel, food, gas, transportation. The non-gaming's figured separately. And when you look at the numbers, uh, the gaming revenue's up, up from last year. Um, so anyway, for a team, which you, an average team would bring about 20 people with them. That's including the coaches. And, and let's throw in uh, you know, the, the officials that uh, come for those events. So per team, that's almost $8,000 that every team that we get to come here to an event for Mesquite, $8,000 per every time they come here. So like the Rocky Mountain School of Baseball, they bring, they come here quite often. Uh, some of the soccer, uh, we have a couple of new, uh, new venues for uh, softball, not venues, but uh, new softball organizations that are gonna be coming to town. Uh, got word that old guys rugby is gonna be coming here. These are 45-year-olds up to 70-year-olds that are still playing rugby. I got to see these guys. Uh, we're going to let uh, let the hospital ER room know about them coming. But they go all over the country and they pick mesquite. Uh, every year we have the University of Utah plays UC Santa Barbara in a friendly game here at, at uh, the Sport and Event Complex. They heard about it and they go, "Hey, mesquite looks like a cool place." Somebody watched the Remax Long Drive on ESPN and. They go, wow, that's a pretty neat place. And uh, they gave me a call, and so they've, they've scheduled that for next February, midweek. Nice thing about some of the senior events is they, could, they don't have to use those weekend rooms that are so valuable to the casinos. And so we're reaching out to the senior events, trying to get them to come that Sunday through Thursday, which is usually a little slow. But anyway, back to, back to the figures. Um, let, let's say you have a 20-team tournament to the local economy. This isn't money that comes back to the city directly. This is money spent in the local economy, which most of that is to the hotels. That's about $59, anywhere from uh, $39 to $59, depending on the time of year uh, that someone would spend on a hotel room for the weekend. Remember, this is this is two and a half visitors plus the, the, the participant themselves that they're spending over the course of a weekend coming here. So if you have a 20-team tournament, that's $159,000 that is spent at our local businesses. 
And if you have a 50 team tournament, that's $397,000. And again, these are just averages and these are estimates, but that just goes to further kind of explain what we already know in our hearts that every time we have a big event in town, we see the lines uh, at the stores and the restaurants and everything else. Um, another thing Christian alluded to, the, uh, the gift for kids, they're actually having two softball tournaments uh, this fall, one in October and one in November. Uh, that's the United Sports Association. That's a new softball group that's gonna be putting on events here in town. Uh, we also have, in the springtime, Real Salt Lake is gonna be sponsoring two soccer tournaments that are for elite teams. The, the two big events that we have, one over Martin Luther King weekend and one over President's weekend, those are uh, high school teams and these would be uh, top level elite teams that will be coming from throughout the Western United States. And uh, also, uh, good news too, we just found out this week as well, an Olympic Development Soccer Program is gonna be coming here as well. And we'll get information out when we uh, confirm those dates. So that, that's exciting. You, you, know, you win some and you lose some. We did lose uh, because of the heat in August. We, every August we had the, the Utah youth football, the tackle football guys come and there were 5,000 kids up there. That sport and event complex was going up until midnight, uh, much to the chagrin of the neighbors uh, up there. And it was kind of late, but they started in mid afternoon and it was, if it's 100 degrees out here on that turf, it's, it's another 20 to 30 degrees. So uh, they moved that event up to Cedar City and it was, sorry, that is our largest event that we lost to Cedar City in August uh, due to the heat. But we'll get them coming back. They'll be coming back for an event uh, in November and it, it won't be as big, but at least we haven't lost them totally. Uh, again, we talked about the, the Tri-State Marathon uh, again, having events that Mesquite's known for, I'm gonna go to Mesquite for this event or that event, it all is part of the branding. And what we, what we talked about, we can go back four years, almost four years now, we talked about what can you do in Mesquite that you can't do in your hometown? What would get people to leave their own home, to, to not stop in St. George, to not stop in Las Vegas on their way up I-15? What would bring them to Mesquite? And, and that's differentiation. That's what branding is all about. And Mesquite, a long time ago, city councils and people in town made a commitment to build athletic facilities, our soccer fields, uh, our Pioneer Park won an award from the, the Independent Softball Association, top ball field in the Western United States. And it, it's well known for its event. It's about 20, it's about 20 year old facility. Uh, with, with that commitment, there's a commitment to local businesses too, that as we bring these events to town and we're looking to keep our field use fees affordable so that we can entice them not to go and stop in St. George and other events up there. They can, we hope we get the overflow like we will during the Huntsman Senior Games. Over the next couple of weeks, actually next three weeks, you'll see a lot of visitors coming through town having preliminary events in Mesquite like the Can-Am softball tournament. There's also a pickleball tournament that Sun City's gonna be hosting. It'll be one of the largest pickleball tournaments uh, next to the Huntsman Games that'll be the next week. Uh, that'll be held up at Sun City on their pickleball courts. If we had more pickleball courts in town, it could be even larger here. Uh, and that's a, that's a growing event. Does everybody know what pickleball is? I, I, I saw, you see a lot of blank looks. On, it, it, think of a tennis court played with a hard a hard uh, paddle racket with a ball that doesn't bounce very hard. And it's like badminton slash tennis slash where it's set up like that and you serve the ball. You don't have to run as much. So, you know, all, all of us that have had knee surgeries and hip replacements, <laughs> we can play pickleball. Okay, so. I to learn that one. So, um, and I, and it's, it's the same week as, as the Gold Butte days. And, yes. And, and that's what I, I kind of wanted to finish on this and answer any questions you might have. And that is having events for events. What, what Chris and I learned when we went back to, to Hartford was the cities that are really hitting home runs with events, they're putting on events for the events that are coming to town. There, there's more, and, and what we're finding in the, the, the studies, the tourism studies, is that people spend 80% of the money when they come to town on the secondary reason why they came here. They'll pay their fee to be in the, the uh, soccer tournament or a softball 
but they spend most of their money outside of that venue doing something else. So when we let them know what else that something is for them to do, um, you can all benefit from that. So uh, anyway, that, that's just a, a point I wanted to make that if, if you put up a sign in, the, in your window, your storefront saying we wel welcome athletes, uh, I, I go back to, to my very first job that I had. I worked at the Air Force Academy, and I'd never been, I didn't even know where Clemson, South Carolina was. I was on a plane Thanksgiving Day for a basketball tournament, the Ipte basketball tournament in Clemson, South Carolina. And we fly into, I believe, Columbia, and drive into town late at night, and they had a little paw prints coming in. It's a small town. Anybody been to Clemson? There you go. Little paw prints in the road. This was back in the 80s, so nobody had ever done this before. And it was very intimidating. I'll never forget the look on the cadets' faces when they were looking at these things going, where are we headed to? Uh, Clemson had just won the national championship in football, and, and we had a tour of their stadium. We went to the hotel rooms and checked in. There was gift baskets on our, uh, on our beds, and I had a, a welcoming banquet. It was just amazing, and the, the people just that the Chamber of Commerce was involved in it, the, the Foundation Club at the, the Clemson, the Ipte Club at Clemson University. Ipte means I pay 10 a year. That was their theme way back when. Did you go to Clemson or you I just did. visited? Okay, so you know about I'm the Ipte. I'm a lifelong fan and went there and graduated in 2005. So. There you go. Yeah, I, what do they call the stadium now? Uh, Death Valley or something? Yeah, like it's that? Death Valley is the nickname of this Memorial Stadium. They, they let us go, and I guess there's a stone you rub when you run down into the stadium. Yeah, I don't know how the players don't fall on their heads. When they it's happened the once or twice. There you go. Uh, very impressive, but that was a lasting impression on me. And, and a lot of people say, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not what you, you, know, you tell people. It's, it, it's the feeling you get when you go there. And it was so impressive, and people just made us feel so welcome. Again, it was very intimidating from those little paw prints on the roads going into town to uh, the time we left. Uh, Air Force basketball in the day wasn't known for its great basketball. We didn't have anybody <laughs> over 6'3", <laughs> over I think it's better. Uh, but, but anyway, uh, they played their hearts out. But it, it's just that experience that you get. And those of you that aren't familiar with the sporting world, uh, they're very passionate about what they do. And they spend a lot of money when they, when they go to town. I, knew, I took my kids on trips out of town and uh, it was worth it. It was worth the experience they had to go and travel. And the experience they had when they come to Mesquite, we want to make sure they come back. So with, with that, I'll answer any questions or any other comments. Okay. I just have one question. Okay. Uh, regarding, and this is, this is retrospect because August has passed us, but, uh, mm -hmm. and, and I'm new here, so I, I don't know anything that's going on, so pardon me for my ignorance. But have you considered uh, midnights at Mesquite for your softball tournaments, having everything at night? We, uh, we had a, we, we used to have, uh, they call them heat stroker tournaments, where they'll play all night long. They'll start at, at 10 o'clock at night or when the sun goes down and play all night long. Uh, we hadn't done that in a long time. We did the first one this year back in July. We're losing things in August, that's all I'm saying, is maybe midnights in Mesquite is the attraction to bring them back. It, uh, I it, enjoyed playing under the lights when I was in. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, they, they had a good time. It was a it was a decent turnout because it, it was kind of experimental. We hadn't done it in a while. It was pretty tough on staff, uh, but uh, you know it's it's worth it if we can look for ways that we can can beat the heat, so to speak, oh, in I the summer. Your Clemson thing. Uh, I'm a new guy here in town. I love Mesquite, and I think there's a lot to, a lot to be had here. All you need to do is promote it. So you find a way to do it. That's all. all it takes. Well, and and we've. The, and I the, should be commenting. I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, maybe we need to do a little bit more of that. Any suggestions? Say, well, you know, that's why Reno has hot August nights. You know, and they do the same. That's a great idea, actually. Because I, did, I didn't even know we were doing anything at night. There, we were going to do a, a soccer tournament overnight in uh, back in June, and uh, that got a little traction, and then uh, we're realizing that it would be tough on the kids. You know, adults maybe, you know, are used to college kids. That overnight thing is not, not so difficult on them. But, uh, Maybe we're just not looking it, at the right audience. Yet, I, exactly. You know, there are a lot of three-on-three -three, uh, uh, adult soccer that you'll see, or, you know, six versus six. You know, it's a little smaller group that you could do that. Uh, you know, any, anything's possible, as long as we have a venue for it and the, the staff to, to be able to handle the event. Okay. Thank you.
I'm actually a recent transplant to Mesquite, Nevada, too, uh, back in May. Uh, and it, it's a, it is its own brand. So what you've done in the last couple of years has really taken hold in the outside world. I was somebody that, you know, the only reason I know about it was because of my fiance here. But watching ESPN, watching the Long Drive Tournament, getting the name out there, then you start to look into it. I mean, it's out there. Now you have to capitalize on it. Like you said, you know, when you have events here, get other events, you know, a restaurant having specials for people coming in, you know, these kids that come in. Like you said, Clemson has this great brand. You go in and it is. You made me a little homesick talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had no idea. Yeah, I know. It, it, it's just funny. He's you, not a plant. Every, <laughs> everything you talked about about Clemson is exactly the way that I felt about hey, it. Hey, my alma mater put their logo on the wrong, on the 45 yard line, so 50, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say what your own mom is? Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, it is that type of thing. And, and Mesquite has it, the beginnings of it. It's just a matter of. I have a question for yeah. you then. As somebody new to Mesquite just since May, what would you say the Mesquite brand is? I think that part of what it is is you need to differentiate yourself. No, what? That's not a question. The, this is the, what I'm answering your question by saying, by saying how I look at Mesquite is the fact that it has some of the things that Vegas has. Mm -hmm. Because I think that people like some of the mm -hmm. things that Vegas has. But they don't always want to go in. They don't want to be on the strip. And Mesquite offers the gambling. They offer that we have great shows here. The UFC thing a couple of weeks ago, as well as uh, the number of concerts that's going on. Casa Palooza was a great event. Um, it, it, it needs. I mean, I've always seen some people, and they try to say, well, you know, we, we're kind of like Vegas. That isn't the way that I've ever looked at it. It's completely different. It has its own brand. It's, you know, it's, it's the sporting aspects of it I, has been what's attracted me, to be honest. The, its own uniqueness, the golf courses. Uh, I mean, a huge golfer. But at the same time, I didn't realize how active it was in terms of bringing in softball, baseball, the different type of sporting events. That I had no clue about the hot air balloon uh, festival. That's something that I can't wait to check out. Those things, I mean, it isn't as advertised as the ESPN Remax World Drop Championship, and maybe that's something that uh, I can start looking into is advertising these other factors along with that thing. Maybe getting World some. Sponsors. Yeah, it's it's harder. I mean, obviously, you know, when you have ESPN and Remax sponsoring something on a national scale, but with the success of that, maybe there's ways to piggyback off that for these other smaller events and bring people in for the other like you were talking about. Thanks. Appreciate it. Well, another thing, you know, speaking of the uh, signature event, the Long Drive Championship, anybody look at opening that up to having it open and available for all the golfers that come here to be able to go out and hit on? We, uh, we tried the first year, uh, we had the sport and event complex. We did have a driving range. Are we over time? No, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, we, we did have a driving range up there, and uh, well, the golf courses kind of wanted them to go to the golf course to do that, but uh, we we did do that, and uh, I don't maybe I'm speaking out of turn, so we might edit this out of the video here, but uh, never. What you say? Never. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm in trouble with Frank Patty here, but the Mesquite Senior Games wants to do a long drive uh, sport. Uh, their golf it was just it was really hard to get traction. They were thinking about doing that for the seniors. I think it is a and, senior. Yeah, I, I don't know if he's announced that yet, but uh, now you know. Yeah, now Frank has to. But you also, you also have to say that Long Drive has a qualifying round here. Mm -hmm. That That's anybody fine. here in Mesquite is welcome to get Yeah, we have two. They, they yeah. start their season in March, right? and then yeah. they have the last it's chance serious. qualifier in September. It's here. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking something even to, to give a golfer, or a group of golfers, four, eight, 12 guys, why should we go to Mesquite? Can we go to Mesquite? We can go out for a couple hours and hit where we see on TV and see how far we can hit it. And bet with each other on it. Also, except you go up there and there's nobody there. It's closed and there's no marking. So. Well, there's lots of things. And I think that you hit on it, Brian. And I think that uh, Christian was mentioning it. Blake and I were down at the Smoking and Mesquite Barbecue. And one of the things we noticed was that we had a lot of people in town and nobody was open. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but there were a lot of people, and so talking about having having events to go with events, I think when people really want to market their business, 
they need to look at being open like that Sunday and Monday or whatever it's a long holiday weekend or whatever we've got going on. They've got to make some accommodations instead of saying, well, it's a long weekend, I'm going to take off. And then people are asking us, well, is there a shopping district we can go to? Is there a, a flea market? Is there a, a you know, fruit, the vegetable? Uh, uh, farmers, market. farmers market, thank you. Those people that grow food. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? And we're sitting there like, no, no, you know. And so I think building events around other events, or at least having our businesses aware of them, so that they can have a sidewalk sale, put a sign in the window, do things like uh, get involved with the gift bags and different things. When I used to travel, my daughter played uh, Junior Olympic softball. And we traveled all over the country with that. And when you would go to a city and they would have stuff for you and be glad you were there, you felt it. And I think we need to do more of that. And that's the advantage Mesquite has over, let's say, bigger cities exactly. south of here, where you don't feel as welcome. It's just too big. And so you're an insignificant part of right. that. That's the ambiance Mesquite has. And I'm just going to interpret. That's why we've been having these forums. And your city say they need, they need. Well, that they should be here, and that's what we're trying to tell. So to sit here and say we need this, this, this—that's an old record over and over and over. That bring tell these businesses to get here because if they don't care about coming here, they're not going to be open. And I just wanted to say that. So if you can get these people here to do this, because that's I spent we spent meetings and hours to be here tonight. There's I was thinking without the media, there's nine people here. That's I'm here. We were meeting last night at city council, and so these businesses don't care. And if we could get our our business neighbors to get involved, to be open for these people, so that's what this that's what we're doing for them. I'm taking my time, and so please bring the other people. That's that's one of the things though, that that Natalie said kind of nicely, and that was though is that we are, we hear a lot of people complain about. But if we have businesses, we, 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 we hear those people complain that it's the city's job or the chamber's job or somebody no, else's no. job to market their business. Nope. They need to be here finding out what they need to do, what they're doing for their business. Because I know most of the people here and the people that are here, they've been working on marketing their business. Is it working, Kurt? Is it working, Sylvia? So I mean, when you're well, marketing when they your see business, a success, they're not they'll follow along. So <laughs> we, if we follow through and help each other with ideas and piggyback off each other, work yeah, each other, I mean, these works. others will come along. But that's, okay. that's what we're doing. They need to be here to find out that they need to market it. It's not the city's job to market my business. Unless you just really have a lot of extra money and want to. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that. That's really good feedback. But you know, get the word out. Talk to your friends. Talk to your business partners. Ask them to come back to the next one. I do have a question because I found out uh, actually from her. Um, how what was going on to advertise about this particular event? Because when I talked to my boss about Bingham. He didn't know what I was talking about. Press releases were in the paper. We announced it at City Council, and we sent out email blasts in the chamber. And it's been on the front page so. of the community yeah. calendar. I don't, yeah. I don't and, and doubt the press here. They've been helping us. Ignoring that. Helping helping us. Us. So we, so, so for everybody, we are doing these every other month. We're looking at doing them the Wednesday after the City Council, city council meeting, the the, the, the fourth second. City Council meeting of the month. We do it second. that Wednesday fourth. after. Second. Second, second, second council meeting. Second council meeting, Thank which is the fourth. It's only annually, really. It's only annually. It's annually every September. Right. So, so you know, our goal is to and get the people July. that are hosting the events <laughs> and, and give you the information so that you can start planning. And a great tool is the um, events planning calendar that's on the city website. And I sent it out in, in the chamber email blast. Barbara Ellison in her paper has it as well. So it's a great online online tool, and we have a community uh, calendar. So a, a few more things before we adjourn. Um, Cody Law was going to be here tonight. He had a slide presentation all set up for for everybody, but he took ill. So um, and he's been in the doctor in St. George all day. So um, I said, okay, you don't have to come. So I'm going to just kind of outline <laughs> some of the things that he um, he was going to talk about. So he's, he's hosting the, media, the Mesquite Media Classic 2012. And this is a huge event. They actually, this is the second year they're doing it, and they actually stole it from Scottsdale, Arizona. So it's just going to grow and grow and grow. They've got 100 golf writers coming from all over the world. We've got a reporter coming from Czechoslovakia. Um, so 
they're going to be here in November, and they're they're going to be writing articles about you know the golf, but not only golf, the golf, the city of Mesquite and what the city has to offer. So when you talk about events for events, welcome the, the Mesquite Media Classic. You know, even just by putting a sign up in your in your um, uh, window. And you know how that media is. Yes. Yes, we yes. do. <laughs> so so it's a great opportunity. Terrible. I don't have the dates. Um, they're on. Do you have the dates? Yeah, I do. It's a five-day event, um, and they're looking for business sponsors. So I put cards out on the on the chairs. Call that eight six six number and talk to Cody and find out ways that you can sponsor. Like I said, it's a five-day event, and they're going to be doing all different things. Tenth through the twelfth. Uh, November tenth through the twelfth, and a lot of times they stay extra and come early. Do you know what you're be sponsoring though? What are they looking no, for? No, you have to talk to Cody. It, 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 I didn't get all those details. Um, so it's, pro it's probably stuff like they just want, if they're trying to give these people the misguided experience, it's that kind yeah, of stuff. I don't know. Um, they have a room with tables in it where they go around and actually meet. Right. I'll kind of explain, you know, it's a very tight thing because of the, the golf people there, the, the big branded people will be there. But they've talked about maybe the night before at the, another complex letting us have vendor booths or something like that right. and stuff. But he's trying to work with us so that it won't be such a close thing to let have a night where the, the locals and, and their and our, our businesses can get in and work. So that's what he was right. working on. Right. So call Cody. He'll have all the details for you. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to talk about is Gold Butte Days Festival. It's October 12th and 13th. On the 12th, it's we open at 3 p.m. and close at 7. And then on Saturday, the 13th, it's from 9 until 5. It'll be on Yucca Street. We're closing down Yucca between City Hall and um, the Chamber. We are going to have a half marathon and a 5K run. We've got, uh, I think, over 35 runners registered right now. We hope to have up to 50. And they're going to be running through Gold Butte and ending at the festival. We're going to have a stage with live entertainment throughout both days, some local and some people coming from outside of, um, our, our town uh, to do the entertainment. So Cindy's putting together a really good entertainment list. We're going to do a scavenger hunt. So the businesses that can't come and get a booth, that we're going to bring the festival to them. And we have over 35 businesses registered for this scavenger hunt. And so it's going to be a pay to play. Um, for the people that want to participate in the scavenger hunt and the, there's going to be a cash prize. So um, I'm real excited about that. It's going to be, have a lot of fun with that. Lots of food. We've got 60 art vendors. Oh, wow. So it's going to be massive. I'm real excited about it. So um, if, you, if you can't, def all definitely art, try to come. All art Most of them are. Most of them are. Yeah, so it's going to be exciting. So with that, so I'm going food, to... We have a beer garden. We have a beer garden sponsored beer by the Rotary. <laughs> That's right. That's right. It's going to be wonderful. So with, with that, I'd like to introduce Darlene Montague from the college. She has some exciting news about some classes that she's putting together for the businesses. Thank you. Um, although I realize that this is very important, the business to business um, forum, I think equally as important is having a skilled workforce. Um, what we have done, Adam and I worked together several months ago, sent out, put together a survey, sent out a survey to the chamber members, and um, the responses we got, we I put together, I met with my workforce and economic development crew with non-credit classes in Las Vegas, and I came up with two of the top class uh, areas that people were interested in. Uh, that would be, and everybody should have one of these, okay, but you can take it with you. Um, one of the, the first area was customer service, um, workshop, and a business writing fundamentals. And so um, with the information that was compiled, we took into consideration price, the time frame, um, and, um, and the cost. Did I say cost? Time frame. And um, so, we are going to have our first class begin in October. It's a three-hour class. It'll be on the 24th. Uh, that This time frame, noon, noon to three, it was a little bit longer than we had originally hoped. We were trying to do a two-hour, but I think three will be okay as well. Um, there is a $5 discount for chamber members, although this, these classes are open to all businesses in the community. So, um, on the back of this sheet, it does tell you if you go in and you go through 
applying, um, filling out the application, it gives you a code, and that would give you the five dollar discount. So it would bring it down to sixty dollars. Yeah, people would need this class. You can. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. You know some people. Like I know some people like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you know, I'm I'm real. I'm open to. Uh, we've got we've got probably uh, um, three or four more classes that that we want to focus on, but if you have any ideas, we can always customize something. And I think with the community, rather than a particular business trying to customize a class, we can keep the cost down. But, you know, uh, we're looking at uh, email etiquette as one, another one, um, marketing and advertising. So, um, you know, please, please pass these on to your friends. I also want to make a challenge to everybody. Bring a, a, another business with you next to the next meeting. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Johnny. Well, that concludes our program. Natalie. I want to thank the people for the amplifier in this room. Oh, yes. We must give credit to um, Guns and Guitars. They donated the, uh, the amplifier and the microphone. So you can hear us all. So. And Falcon Ridge Hotel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. So, yeah, you see they were taking the signs down. Anyway, <laughs> thank you very much for coming.